All right, what's up guys? I'm building a cross cart, finally. Um, if you, you already know what it is, but it's one of these. So, I've been looking at these things for like a year and a half. I first saw them on Instagram and dude, I fell in love with it. I didn't know how to build it though and there was nobody telling me how to build it. You couldn't buy plans or anything. So what I ended up doing was building one of these which is a Piranha 3 buggy from The Edge, uh, The Edge Products, I guess, out of Australia. Now, it's cool and all, but it's not a cross cart. It is an off-road buggy. It's got a long travel suspension on it, big tires, and a long wheelbase. And a cross cart is the opposite of all of that. So, what I've done here is design my own and this is a small rendering of that design um, it's the snub nose just like the picture you just saw I built that in Bentax program here's a little of their stuff it's not exactly CAD design but it is built on the software and um, shows me how to build it and there's the first piece right there the base frame so we're just jumping right into the build here. Uh, I'll add a couple uh, clips of this. It was, it was a nightmare. It was a shit show. But that's the thing. I'm building this thing like a caveman. And although everything's not perfect, it's going to come out looking and acting just like a professional race buggy. Uh, you don't, you know, building this thing, I didn't know anything about what I was doing. I've never fabbed before and it came out great so if you have the capability you know if you have some mechanical knowledge in the tools you can certainly build one of these now the platform I'm using Miata axles and hubs those are 12 inch golf cart wheels actually um, I have those and I also have some 10 inch uh, wheels coming in running 18 inch tires which is what the real cross carts run out in Europe and then I have this which is a 2010 Gixxer 600 it's got 125 brake horsepower it's not uh, you know it's not bad but I would like a little bit more power but since this is like the prototype this will be fine for it I got the engine for 400 bucks I watched this thing on Facebook Marketplace for like four months waiting for the price to come down and it finally did and I, you know, I scooped it up real quick. Now when I'm finished with this, I will have a, a designer, a CAD designer, build these plans up so this buggy can be reproduced. You know, I'll sell the plans to whoever wants them at a very good price. Um, but that's after I get this thing built and all the bugs worked out of it. You know, I want all the suspension geometry to be perfect. I want the design to be there. Um, I don't really want to sell the buggies themselves. I want to sell the plans and you guys build them because, you know, I could, I could build these in my garage and there could be, you know, five or six Jimbo Slice buggies out there in the world, but I want there to be like five or 6,000. So I want you guys to be able to build these as cheap as I do. And I really think I'm going to be able to get this thing done for un well, well under five grand. I want to be able to do it for four, but uh, we'll see. Um, as far as it's going now, it looks like that's how it's going to work out, probably around 4,200 or so. Um, now, I'll be able to get it down so cheap, though, because I will be building the center section, you know, that holds the rear chain, uh, the chain drive. I'm buying sprockets, um, building the you know the bearing carriers for the hubs and everything you know for the wheel to mount onto the hubs are actually from Miata's like I said so I really just had to ba build a bearing carrier that I hook up my um, on my suspension to and I will sell all that stuff too at a very good price so don't worry about that and let's jump into this build so right now I'll be building this nose section this here um, there's not much to it, you know, it's cutting and bending tube. I'm going to do a lot of time lapse for the chassis build. When something important comes along, I'll stop and talk about it, but for the most part, enjoy the time lapse.
All right, I'm gonna go through a bend in real time here so you can see what's going on. I've got my inch and a quarter tube loaded up and I need to bend these two at 90 degrees. So I'm actually gonna to go to 93. And then I've got two marks lined up, which I will line up with the front side of that die. And you can't see that right now, but that's okay. And then I have my digital angle finder back here, which is um, freaking out a little bit because I just touched the tube. But this allows you to know that when you pull that through to do the second bend, it's still in the same 90 degree plane, or whatever you call it, flat. It hasn't turned a degree, two or three. I've dealt with that and it really sucks. So when you come to do the second bend, you just come back here, make sure you're still at the same, um, we're gonna be at point one, it looks like. And then everything will be square. So let's go through a bend sequence and see what's going on. All right, I lied, this is not in real time. It was way too long. But um, another tip is that digital angle finder is uh, pretty useful, but it's not infallible. So there are these stands that you can get. It's just a you know, it's a stand with a roller on top, it's like 12 inches wide, and you set it under both sides of the tube, so you have two, obviously. Um, and then make sure that your bender is dead set at 90 degrees um, from the floor, right? So it's not leaning forward or backwards at all because that's going to mess up your measurements a lot too. Mine's at like 89 degrees and you're going to see that this uh, this bent section didn't come out straight. It's not square. Now you can see that this still didn't come out perfectly square. And I didn't check with my eye to make sure everything was good too. I usually do, but... She's not square, so what I'm going to do is put that end in a vise and then put some inch and a half tube around each side of these to get some leverage and basically torque them back into place. So you can see that's what I did. I just got some larger diameter tube and slipped it around, got some leverage, and then pushed one forward and pulled one back until it looked like it was where it needs to be. You're probably going to have to go back and do it three, four, five times and it's just a good tool to have because no matter what kind of techniques and tooling you're using, you're gonna mess you're gonna mess up some stuff. All right, so now you can see she's square. There's about I don't know maybe a sixteenth of an inch under there, but I can get that all square when I weld it down, so it's perfect. We just had to go full caveman after doing all those uh, measurements, but she'll work, and I just got to be more careful next time. It's tomorrow. I'm not loyal. I did some work without you guys last night and this morning. I've uh, just marked up center lines all the way down my table and then on my base frame here in my nose. So now that this is all square, I've uh, just marked up where to cut the rest of this off at. I'm going to cut it and then measure how much I need to notch onto the base frame and we're gonna lift it about two inches, which will give me about eight degrees so I can get my caster angle for my front suspension. So, let's get to it. So what I'm doing now is just getting those notches ready for that nose piece. Uh, what you're gonna see though is that I'm gonna have to tweak it a little bit because, you know, nothing comes out that perfect. Once, you know, once you get on down the line, yeah, you can get everything squared up, but when you first start building, um, not everything's gonna be square and that's fine. When I was building that piranha, I threw away a lot of good parts because, you know, they were they were just barely off, you know, and I, I didn't know any better. I thought it would throw off the whole suspension, the whole geometry. Really though, you just need to get, you know, your motor mounts and your suspension all mounted really dead straight and square. But the chassis you can compensate in other places. You know, it doesn't have to be um a hundred percent like like that eighth of an inch that this corner that you're about to see is off is not, it, it's not too bad. It can be fixed. So I totally forgot to look at this and my front end is not square either. That's about a little less than a quarter inch up. So what I'm going to do with that nose to get it in, instead of trying to bend this or make a new one, um, my JD squared bender over here does, uh, you can move the block up and down. So, you know, I can move it all the way up and it just takes out a little bite out of the top of this. What I'm gonna do is move it down um, 
a little less than a quarter of an inch so it notches that off center and then when I put them together this will be perfectly square again so my suspension is all square the rear end is square so as long as I get this nose right a um, little twist in the chassis won't do anything I just gotta I mean that's why this is the prototype man I'm gonna find out all the mistakes here and then build it right on the next one all right, she's all fixed up. The nose is completely square now. I've got it all on a level, looks nice. Um, the nose is now square to the rear end too. Those two bars are flat, they're not twisted. Even though this base frame is twisted up a bit, since I notched that side, uh, I didn't go directly through the center line. I brought it up some so then I could, you know, push that mounting point down lower and it worked just fine. You can see what happened right there though, how that bottom leg is longer. Now I need to get this fitment a little bit better, but yeah, this is the prototype though, man. This is what this is for, I'm learning. And uh, in the future, I'll know to watch for all that stuff, but like I said, this thing's gonna come out looking beautiful when I'm done. What you're seeing here is I realized I didn't clamp down that front nose where I've got my hands at right now. And um, the heat from those tack welds pulled that whole nose section upwards. Now putting those tacks on the bottom like I'm doing now, um, evened it back down, or pulled it back down and evened it out. But just make sure you remember to always clamp your work down when you're, um, you know, when you're welding it because that heat's going to want to pull it all over the place. So that's going to be the end. I know it's very abrupt, but we're at 12 minutes already and I can't find the rest of the footage. Um, I'll wrap the rest of it up into another couple videos. There will be either one or two more chassis build videos and then we'll move into the rear end and the spindles. And I'm sure that's what you're looking for in the first place, but um, it, it's going to get exciting um, watching this thing grow. Now, if you're watching this and you've never built before, but you just really love, you know, the idea of having a cross cart, dude, you can do it. I promise you, you can do it. I started that Piranha, that other buggy that I have, um, with no, I didn't know how to weld or anything. And um, just through practice, trial and error, I figured it all out. Or I'm starting to figure it out, rather. But, I mean, I don't even have that much money invested into this. Um, Okay, I do have a lot of money invested, but, you know, that's because this is where I'm taking my life. This is going to be my, this is my life. This is what I'm going to do for a living now. But for you, like to build that other buggy, that Piranha, I only had like 2500 bucks invested in tools. And that was my welder, a chop saw to cut tube, a grinder, um, my tube bender, and my tube notcher. Um... And that all ran me up, I don't know, I'm going to guess around 2500 bucks. You can get it all cheaper than I bought too. Um, that's up to you. But I'm telling you, it's so worth the purchase. Like, like I had no passion before I started doing this stuff. And uh, I, I found it. This is my passion. I'm 30 years old now. And I, you know, I never, uh, I was never passionate about anything. And I didn't even know that I liked this stuff because I'd never done it. Because I'd never been exposed to it. Because none of my family or friends do it. But I do now, and it's awesome, and it's worth it. And I'm telling you, if you got the money, just just spend it, buy it, buy the stuff. Um, and you can do it over time too. You don't have to buy it all at once. I mean, your friend has a welder. You got a grinder. Um, get the get the tube bender and the notcher. That will make you money right there too. Building, you know, bumpers for people's jeeps and um, you know, roll bars for somebody's little Miata or something like that. I'm telling you, you'll make your money back for sure. But um, I don't know. That's it. Peace, guys.